From the studios of Foxborough Cable Access, located in the center of Foxborough, Massachusetts, you are watching Around Foxborough. Hello and welcome to Around Foxborough, the show where we talk about the people, places, and things that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. My name is Mark Rivard, and we have a special election edition today. And just so you know, as a disclaimer, Foxborough Cable Access does not endorse any specific candidate. However, we do give them the opportunity, if they wish, to come on and speak on our airwaves. And I'm pleased to have today Dr. Natalia Linos. Welcome, Natalia. Thanks so much for having me, Mark. So you're running for the fourth congressional seat. Um, it's a very packed uh, group, <laughs> a lot of competition. So tell us a little bit about your background um, for people out there. So Mark, I'm an epidemiologist, uh, someone who has worked in public health for 15 years, uh, but not, um, not in a lab. I've been out in the real world. I just want to make it clear. I worked at the United Nations for 10 years advising governments on what they can do on climate and health, on pandemic preparedness. And I worked at the New York City Health Department to ensure that we could call out racism as a health challenge. Um, I currently lead a center for health and human rights. And I am, um, you know, a mom of three little kids. Wow. So you've, uh, you've actually worked with things dealing with pandemics, et cetera. So it's, it's nice to have a, it's a breath of fresh air to talk to somebody about science because it seems a lot of people aren't even, you know, it, it's become so politicized lately on both sides. And it's like, well, science is sort of definite. <laughs> Politics can go either way, but science is there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to hear somebody with that background. <laughs> exactly, Mark. And it is a crowded race, but our Congress only has 14 scientists and I would be the 15th. So I hope to earn people's votes in Foxborough and across District 4 because to get us out of the pandemic, we need more scientists down in Washington. Absolutely. So um, talk about some of your certain um, issues that you're, you're really working toward in this campaign. I, you know, I've did a little background, you know, and checking, and I know you're looking for, you know, healthy communities, healthy planet, Medicare for all. Tell us a little bit about your platform. So my platform is centered around health and I define health as well-being. Health is about our housing quality. Health is about our schools. Health is just about living the life that we value and making sure that our kids also have a future to look forward mm -hmm. to. So my platform is around healthy neighborhoods, making sure we have parks, making sure we have good schools. It's about a healthy planet, meaning, you know, the Green New Deal and ensuring that we have a climate future. And health is about shared prosperity so that, you know, people have jobs that pay well, so they don't need to work three jobs. That during COVID, we're really ensuring that people have the money to put food on the table, that they're not worried about being homeless. And ensuring that the prosperity of our country, we're one of the wealthiest countries, is shared across everybody, whether you're a woman or a man, whether you're black or white, and ensuring that that is what guides us. So I'm a scientist on a science and data platform with an equity lens to everything. And a mom, which is very important too. Yeah, three. I have seven year old <laughs> and I have three year old twins. And I say that wow. because I think parents would understand that it's not an easy decision to run. I decided to run. Uh, despite being, you know, a mom of little kids, because it felt urgent, because I have a unique skill set for this moment. And at this moment in time, we need people with public health backgrounds to step up and help us get through this crisis. Absolutely. And, and this crisis, I mean, how, how has it been campaigning during this? Because it's a very difficult time. I asked this question to all the candidates because, you know, it's hard. I mean, normally I'm in the studio doing these interviews and, you know, doing everything by Zoom for my regular job for this. How is it campaigning during this? Because it must be difficult not being able to see people a lot in person and talk to them in person. It's very difficult, Mark. And it's, you know, it's challenging to also ensure that your volunteers, I have 300 volunteers and we're all remote connecting by Zoom. You can't create that, you know, excitement that you would in a campaign office if we were all in the same place. But there's also been some silver linings. For example, every day, uh, Monday through Friday at noon, I do something called Ask Me Anything on Zoom. And I'm just online and anyone from across our district can log on and ask me questions. And today it was a conversation with, you know, about 10 people. And there were some from Brookline, some from Taunton. There was one from Fall River. That accessibility, the fact that I can be in one spot and be connecting with people from across the district is the norm now because of Zoom. And, and I think 
that kind of innovation has been wonderful. That has been my favorite part, really connecting directly with voters who can ask me about anything they want. Is that something you would continue if you were elected? Yes, yes. I think I, I would like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to ask people questions and have them answer me. <laughs> exactly. I think, you know, I think what has become clear is that people want that, you know, and I use social media, I tweet and we respond and Facebook, but people like to get on and directly talk to you. And, you know, it's been nice to do it in a small group setting because there's also conversation between people. So you'll have someone, you know, from two different towns disagreeing or agreeing and really as, as, the representative for the fourth, I want to listen to every single person and make sure that I'm available during, you know, traditional means, you know, you can write me a letter, but I will be there too, to, to connect face to face. So what's a letter? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, so you're saying your, your oldest is seven? Yes. So school? Oh my gosh, school. The pain I, of the uh, parents, second grade. She's entering second grade. Uh, remote or hybrid? Just they curious. Have- they're starting in Brookline. Um, they have said that the aim is to go hybrid, but at the moment they don't, they will be remote for second grade. Um, they're going to be in person K and one. And once they've fixed the sort of the ventilation, they'll allow more in person. Um, you know, this is top of mind for me and every single parent across the district. And Mark, you know, I think that we have to get this right. We need to say that schools are top priority. So we need to stop having indoor dining, ensuring that people who work there obviously have money. We need to stop, you know, movie theaters and casinos and, and even museums. I mean, it, it pains me to say that, but I think for every parent and for every educator to be safe, we need to say schools are number one and we need to keep the rates low. And I do want us to be creative, you know, as a public health expert, I know that outdoor transmission is very rare and we have a few months, Mm -hmm. September, October, maybe November, where we can do more outdoors. I have no problem with my daughter only going to school, you know, for three, four hours and being outside most of that time but I cannot imagine her being in front of Zoom for four, five, six hours. It, you know, in the spring, it really was a struggle every single day to get her to even sit in front of a computer for one hour. And, you know, for parents who can't be home holding their kids in front of a computer who have to be working, I mean, what's gonna happen for those kids, for their education? And that's and that's what I was that's what I was gonna get to because it's very hard to be not even a single parent, but two parents, let's say, working at home. And then they have a child taking classes at home. And, and I, I totally get what you're saying. Cause I've have a lot of friends who have young kids. My son is older now, but for them to look outside and see sunshine and they're sitting, it's tough to have in a classroom, but at home, we have so many diversions and video games and TV and, and, and their phone within their reach. Um, it's, it's going to be kind of hard, you know? And, and I think that's, I agree with you that it's very important to get these kids back in school, but safely. Safely, of course. And as a public health expert, that is top priority. And if I was in Congress right now, I would have said, you know, starting in March or April, that would have been my top priority. How do we get kids back into school safely? What money do schools need in order to retrofit their buildings, to make sure that teachers have PPE and that they have access to, you know, sanitizers, to you know, make the class size smaller, because of course, that is important too. And it feels like it's been not even thought about. And now we're weeks away, and they're like waking up to this. And that is what has been tragic. Um, We just simply have not had a plan at the federal level. And that's why I'm running, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. (laughs) Because I I agree, we do not have a plan at the federal level at all, at all. Um, So this, this is usually my my last question but it's very open-ended five, 10 minutes, you know, state your case, tell everybody out there exactly why they should vote for you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. So I'm a different candidate. I, first of all, I did not grow up in Massachusetts. I grew up in Greece. I, you know, my parents were international students. I was born, there were doctors who came here for the residency and I was born in Cleveland and they moved back to Greece when I was months old. I grew up there. And then at 17, I came to college to Massachusetts. I came to Harvard and I loved it. I fell in love and I said, this is going to be home. My parents still live in Greece. It's, it's hard, you know, being an immigrant. 
Um, I, I'm first generation technical, but technically, but you know, I made a home in Brookline, and I have my husband and our three little kids. Uh, but I've also had a very international career. That's not what you see in other candidates. And I currently lead a center on health and human rights. And so you'd say, why? Why is she running for office? And what I want people listening to know is I'm running because this country is in a mess. I have seen other countries get through this. We have less than 5% of the world's population and 25% of the deaths. And we are one of the wealthiest countries with some of the best doctors, some of the best nurses. We simply have gotten it wrong. So I decided to run because it felt urgent, it felt necessary. And I have the skill set to get us through this crisis. I have the skill set to be, you know, the data nerd and the scientist who's looking at, you know, what do we need to do today to get our schools open? But I'm also the candidate of the future. You know, I want people to know that, you know, because a lot of people say, well, you know, epidemiology, first of all, it's important to acknowledge that we're not going to get through this in months. We're talking about years. And as your Congresswoman for the next two years, I will get us through this. But even in the future, you know, the priorities of the fourth district, jobs, climate change, racial justice, these are all things I have worked on my entire career. And I'm not a politician. I don't have big money. And so you're going to have to want a different type of candidate, someone who doesn't have any links to, you know, lobbies or corporate interests. I am independent. I'm here to serve. I'm here to listen. And my top priority is every single resident in our district and getting COVID under control for everyone in Massachusetts and in our country. So if you want something different, someone different, a mom, someone who has a science background, someone who understands the immigrant experience, and someone who truly wants to serve and wasn't going to run unless there was an emergency and we are in an emergency, then vote for me. And what I've heard, Mark, why people are excited about me is because I'm, I'm real. You know, I say, you know, in, in debates, if someone asks a question, I don't know the answer. I say, I don't know, but I know where to get the answer. And that's not what people are used to in terms of politicians. They're used to people trying to pretend someone they're not. I will put our residents first. I will put people and their jobs and their needs, their daily needs first. And I will do my utter best to use data and evidence to get us through this. And that's a promise. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I say that every day in my regular job. I don't know the answer to that, but I'll, I'll get the answer. Okay. I'll find out the answer. You know, even if it takes a day, I'll find out because yeah, it's, it's <laughs> nobody's omnipotent. <laughs> exactly. And I think politicians need to admit to that, that we also don't know everything. And, and what our, you know, constituents want is that we will do our best to find the right answer. Yeah. That's great. Well, Natalia, thank you very much for joining us today. Good luck in the campaign. And uh, we wish you the best. Thank you so much, Mark. Take care. Bye. Thank you. And that was Natal Natalia Linos, candidate for the 4th Congressional District. And my name is Mark Rivard, and this has been Around Foxborough. Have a great day.